assume you know. Can you quickly type in the question string, guys, if you're able to hear me? Great, I appreciate that. Thank you, guys. Just give me one second here. <clears throat> okay. All right. Thank you, guys. I appreciate that. Um, so um, let's get started here. I hope by now some of you got a chance to look at our, uh, our demo session. This is going to be the first uh, class, guys, okay? So in the demo session, I gave a few perspectives of what is big data and things like that. And uh, my plan for today, ladies and gentlemen, what we will do is I will quickly introduce myself here for a few, for a few, of, uh, for a few minutes, okay? This is going to be step one. Step two. We will go ahead and have a few uh, introductions of uh, some of our uh, folks who have joined and we'll just try to understand and exchange uh, you know, their views and perspectives a little bit, spend a few minutes, not really a lot, um, and so just in the interest of the time. And then today we will go ahead and uh, take a first look at our first uh, big data, uh, introduction to big data uh, session, guys, big data and uh, what's big data and how do we try to get into it a little bit uh, more deep and uh, we'll spend a, about an hour on that. Then the next part of it, gentlemen and ladies, we will go ahead and have uh, a question session for today so that you guys can go ahead and uh, let me know what, what if you have any questions and things like that. Based on that, we will try to uh, uh, take the next step and things like that. So that's going to be the Q&A. And, uh, so let's see, before I introduce uh, this uh, one, guys, let me also bring up, I think you may have already looked at uh, our uh, course modules and things like that. So I'll have that come up in a second. And uh, let's go to close that. Oops, one second, guys, let me go in. Close that. Cool. Let's come back here. Okay. So there's a quick look at our uh, modules, guys. Okay. So we're going to we'll go ahead and have a quick chat. But let me go ahead and uh, introduce one more time. I know I have already introduced, but in the, in the interest of others who may have joined just today, uh, here's my introduction, guys. My name is Naveen, and I have about uh, 18 years uh, experience in IT. And about 10 years I lived in uh, US. Last uh, seven to eight years I'm here in uh, India. And uh, last two to three years I'm heavily involved in big data and uh, data science uh, platforms and technologies. That's okay. Um, so that's a brief introduction about myself one more time. And what we will do now today is, you know, before I move on, I just want to let you know the here are the course modules guys. This course is both includes both uh, admin and development and we will go deep into the admin and the development concepts guys. Uh, we also have a support team uh, on standby just in case you need any help or in case you uh, want any uh, additional uh, support. Uh, our support team can also uh, help you and uh, the, some of the main modules are Big Data, Hadoop, and Advanced Map Reduce Concepts, uh, Planning a Cluster, How do you design a cluster, and uh, getting into the admin administration. I will have some of the admin uh, topics also coming at the end. Here are the uh, uh, other modules, right? Big Hive, Hbase, and so on. If you looked at our demo, I have given an introduction, so I, do, I, won't, I will not go much into uh, that one guys okay as to what it is uh, and when the right slides come up I'll give you a bit more uh, uh, conceptual introduction about those things guys okay and finally we will also look at our banking uh, project that we will be doing how a banking project uh, used Hadoop that, that will give you a uh, good idea about the complete life cycle of Hadoop you know how the various components of Hadoop Hadoop will fit in and where they will help and contribute is what the objective of that one is, guys, okay? And then fundamentals of scale and spark. This is going to be the uh, modules where, uh, which will get you into 
uh, Spark and we'll give you an idea how things work in Spark and things like that guys, okay? Spark is one of those things which is receiving a lot of attention in uh, today's uh, big data world because it makes Hadoop uh, 10 to 100 times faster based on the uh, data that we are working on. So having an idea, having a uh, uh, you know, having an idea about it is pretty, will be pretty useful for them. And after this one, I will be covering a few more admin modules after these uh, two modules, guys, okay? So that is the plan for today and a detailed uh, introduction of what is big data. I guess by now you would have received this uh, spreadsheet with all these details. In case you have not uh, received it, please feel free to send us a mail, guys. Uh, we will go ahead and uh, let you know or pass on this to you one more time, guys, okay? So we'll be covering flu, Muzi, there's a final project, you know, how we, what's the problem statement, what's the solution, how do we achieve, what are the data sets and specs, you know, we'll get a complete uh, look at uh, that use case and we'll try to understand them, okay? And now, what I'm going to do, gentlemen, ladies, uh, let me go here and... Uh, no cluster. Okay, one more thing I forgot to mention, guys. We will also try to uh, give you a 20 node cluster. We will give you a VPN access to this one. So as long as you are uh, working on this one, you know, once you have your hands on a 20 node cluster, it will give you a very good and a real-time feel of, you know, how things work and how to open things like that. So we'll give you a VPN access, I guess, in the first week. Once, we, once you register, we need to just uh, complete a few formalities for that. So I just want, uh, so that, that will be pretty helpful for you guys, okay? So that is what we are working on. And now, what I will quickly uh, do, guys, I will go ahead and put some of you guys on air here, and I will ask you guys to introduce uh, yourself, guys, okay? So uh, may, here's uh, some of the things that you could do, okay? One, just in, give a brief introduction about yourself, okay? And uh, that's the first uh, thing that you may want to do. And second, just uh, maybe if it is not a big deal, if it is not too personal, share your personal uh, uh, personal reason or personal view, opinion uh, of why you wanted to get into Hadoop and things like that, guys. Okay, for those of you who are uh, coming here for the first time, right? If you look at my demo, I have given some my own perspectives why it is important and so on, guys. So it is something you, which will be. Uh, yeah, which is a pretty good uh, thing to be in as of today. And uh, the whole world, if not today, tomorrow, they are touching big data, guys, okay? So those are the perspectives I, I did explain in my earlier demo. So I won't bore you if you already have looked at that one. And we'll also get a uh, feel of what others are thinking. There are a bunch of guys here, but I will not ask everyone to get to introduce this. We'll just take about three to maybe five of them based on the time and spend about five to ten minutes, guys, okay? So any volunteers here, guys, who wants to just come and introduce uh, themselves on it, can you just quickly type in the questions window? And uh, I'll go ahead and, uh, if you're able to talk. Vikash, shall I give you a uh, chance to come on air, buddy? Are you available? Cool. Any others, guys? Any volunteers out there? who wants to just introduce, you can just type in a Y in the questions window and I'll first uh, give you a chance if that works. Abhishek, all right, IIT Bhuneshwar, wonderful. Let me see, where is Abhishek here? Abhishek Mandra. Abhishek, you're on everybody. Go ahead. Abhishek, you're on everybody. Hello. Yeah, Abhishek. Go ahead, buddy. Uh, yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Abhishek Mudra, and I'm I have just now graduated uh, from a, from mechanical engineering department of IIT BHU. Uh, mm -hmm. That is not Bhubaneswar. It is Banaras Hindu University. Oh. Okay. And, and um, yeah, I am looking for my uh, future uh, career in uh, data analytics, and mm -hmm. I have recently finished a few courses on Coursera about mm -hmm. on data analytics in our programming mm -hmm. and uh, I'm keen to learn Hadoop and Big Data. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Very good. And did something motivate you to learn uh, Hadoop uh, Abhishek, if you don't mind me asking you? Um, motivation in the sense because uh, on most of the forums, uh, like it is the next uh, uh, 
next step to uh, my uh, process, like I, I have been learning R programming, then mm -hmm. machine learning algorithms, and mm -hmm. uh, I, I will soon be starting with Python. So mm -hmm. uh, it, it fits in the uh, hierarchy of the things to be done. Very good, very good. Good, very good. And I think you're on the right track, uh, Abhishek. It's very good that you'll already learn R. Now what you would be looking at is you're going to be looking at some of the things that you do in R. In R, what you can do is everything that fits in a single computer you can do in R, right? The moment yeah. your data uh, is, uh, you know, not fitting on a single computer and you have to use multiple nodes, R will fail. That's where it comes in, I will for your rescue, okay? Again, uh, I do not know if you got a chance to look at my demo. I have shared some of the perspectives because, I'm sorry, uh, Vishay. Did you get a chance to look at the demo by any chance? Uh, no, I haven't uh, seen that. Okay, all right. So I'll ask uh, our support team to uh, go ahead and send the demo uh, because I share some interesting perspectives which will be of uh, useful to you. And uh, keeping it short, you know, the moment your data has to uh, becomes big and one, once uh, it needs to fit on more than one computer, the traditional statistical and visualization applications start failing. That's where it comes in Hadoop and big data, Vishenk, okay? So that is, uh, that is about it and we'll try to learn those things in this course, okay? Okay. Thank you, Abhishek. Appreciate that. Let's move on to Bikas here, Bikas Rai, and see if he's able to come on in. Bikash, go ahead, buddy. Okay. All right, I'm going to move on here. Bikash has three years. Maybe he's unable to come on here, and he's into Java. And let me see Praveen is the next volunteer I have. Let me try to put Praveen on here. Praveen, you're on here, buddy. Praveen, a little Hi. bit closer, buddy. Hi, this is Praveen. Yeah, go ahead, Praveen. Uh, go ahead, Praveen. Uh, this is Praveen. Uh, actually, I'm working with some private concept in uh, Oracle and uh, Java. So, uh, I've been... Uh, my friends are uh, like very much interested in learning this uh, Hadoop because uh, this is a future technology for storing the data. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I also got interest into it and I have, some, uh, I have uh, learned by uh, some tutorials from online. So to, to get some clear idea, so I joined this uh, uh, session now. Mm -hmm. That's it. Very good. Okay. Good to know, Praveen. So it's your friends who suggested you to learn how to And did you get a chance to look at our demo uh, by any chance, uh, Praveen? Uh, no, no, no. Okay, so I would recommend you to go ahead and look at our demo. It is, uh, I have shared some good perspectives why it's a good reason, why it's good for you to go ahead and get into this one. And uh, just have a look at it. And there are others who have already seen this, so I will uh, for now just go ahead and pass it on and uh, move to others. Praveen. Okay, thank you, buddy. Appreciate that, okay? All right, let's see who else is there, guys. I have, okay, Nikhil is into IT um, from IBM. He's in IBM Technologies, nine years of uh, IT. Started my career in Java J2E, and I want to learn how to admin as it will enhance my career. Wonderful. He doesn't have a mic, so I'm reading, out, reading it, guys, okay? We'll go ahead and see um, any other... Uh, any others guys who want to come on and just maybe introduce yourself? Let's see. And let's see, Ranga is just joining. We have Raja here. Mayank, would you be would you be wanting to just come on here and just introduce yourself? One second, guys. Going to this is doing yesterday. No Give me one second, guys. I'm just doing some adjustment here. Okay. Cool. So. 
so all right we'll just go ahead and uh, give one more Barry Nussbaum I'm gonna put you on air Barry just go ahead and see if you'd like to just briefly introduce yourself Barry you're on air buddy um, all right no response there We'll just see how Abhiram is doing today. Abhiram, you're on air, buddy, in case you want to introduce, in case you have an opportunity to just come on air. You can you can quickly type in all the questions we know and also indicate to me if you're able to introduce or not, okay? if you'd like to introduce, uh, just in the interest of the time, okay? No mic, huh? Okay, no problem. All right, guys, then without much further ado, let's go ahead and... Uh, all right, looks like mine's mic is also not working here, guys, okay? So, um, okay, cool. And I think my first one was uh, Praveen, right? Praveen introduced, uh, got a chance to introduce, and Praveen, here is the final project that we will be going ahead and taking. And here is a scenario where, you know, uh, we will uh, take up a banking scenario example where one of the, uh, the project they implement, they have a current process where the e-statement generation process uh, takes uh, about 18 to 30 hours, right? And what we will do is we will see how Hadoop is introduced here, okay? I will try to give you more perspectives on this one a little later as we come on, but in the demo I briefly explained about this one. Chandra, if you're there, buddy, I would recommend you go ahead and send over demo link, huh? not the first class, but the demo link to everyone so that they have uh, Yes, sir, definitely so I have uh, a chance to look at that and it will be pretty interesting. Definitely, yes. sir, I do it. Thank you, Chandra. Okay, I'm going to give a chance to Vinod, guys. Uh, I'm going to put him on air. Let me see. Vinod, you're on air, buddy. Vinod, are you able to... Oops. We'll just give a second here uh, to for the note. We know I can hear you now. Okay. So I have one question like you know uh, how uh, like you know I mean learning big data how is it going to help us like uh, I have just completed my VTech and I'm just passed out. Mm -hmm. so I'm just looking for uh, looking to enter into the analytics market because uh, I keep reading that there is a lot of potential. So mm -hmm. if you can throw some light on like how it is going to help me and how is the demand in the market. Mm -hmm. uh, is, is, is your course going to be very helpful to us? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, that's a very good question I think in the interest of everyone. Uh, that will be of interest to everyone. and. Uh, um, see, these are, these are some of the things I have earlier shared and it's good that you again brought it up. Um, the question is, uh, the thing is, if you were to take uh, .NET or Java, you know, there's only one company behind it. There's either Microsoft or Oracle or, you know, SAP behind it. But the moment you come to Big Data or Hadoop, right, all these companies are investing. Microsoft is investing in Hadoop. Uh, and big data related technologies, Oracle is investing, you t touch any company. The moment you touch big data, the default solution will be Hadoop. They will process a lot of data and they will get the data and they will give, it, give out to many applications. And every company is coming uh, with, they, with their own projects. The more the projects they come up with, the more the opportunities, guys, okay? Today what is happening is internet is becoming your new database. Internet and application logs and all. Uh, the sources of data where they have never looked at until uh, a couple of years back are, are becoming places where they can get lots of insights. So in other words, short and sweet, what is happening is companies always, uh, if they wanted some insights, what would they do? They will use a database or data warehouse, run some reports and get some insights. But today, what they, are doing, uh, what, what they can also do is they can also get insights from other data sources such as internet 
what do you have on internet well Facebook Twitter things and, and so on guys okay what happens there is a lot of uh, conversations which we casually say you know something is good this company is good that product is good and things like that have a lot of significance and value okay companies behind the scenes are detecting these conversations and trying to understand whether they are uh, you know good or bad that is called sentimental analysis we know okay another way to look at is if you take stocks you know, you, you take any stock of a company and if you were to consider a manufacturing company and, you know, if the company manufactures more, the stocks will not necessarily go, go up. The stocks will go up if the uh, sentiment is good for the company, right? So even if the company manufactures less, if the sentiment is good, the stocks will go up. The same concept is being today applicable in multiple domains and it's globally applicable, you know, okay? I'm giving a slightly detailed answer, you know, because it's a good question that you have raised and it deserves that attention so just kind of uh, uh, bear with me here okay so that sentiment every company is interested in understanding by understanding the sentiment right companies are also able to understand what their problems their customers are facing once they understand them what they want to do is they want to fix them why well they can uh, in the next release or in the subsequent releases they can fix and they can uh, release much more better products as a result of that more customers will come to that and more customers is more revenue you know, okay so that is one view one perspective uh, uh, we know and you know what you will what we will cover in this one is both admin and development and uh, so Nikhil, uh, I have a small doubt Naveen are you going to cover both admin and development in the same course yeah exactly the first uh, three to four uh, modules will be both core to admin and development uh, 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 the note and then uh, I will cover the developer oriented courses where admins do not really need a uh, lot of uh, depth in development whereas the developers will need them okay then towards the end again I will cover a few modules which are uh, admin administrator intensive okay so for those of you if you are already uh, registered uh, you can also access our LMS if you're in a hurry uh, uh, if you if you would like to get a look of our uh, you know already recorded sessions they are also available just in case you want to have a quick look at them in advance huh? you know does that help yeah thanks Naveen and uh, I'm looking forward to it actually and the last thing I want to tell you in my question is that your voice is much better than Amita Bachchan Thank you. <laughs> hey, thank you, you know, the, appreciate that. Thank you again. It's a good way to start and thanks for that encouragement and support. Huh? Thank you, buddy. All right, guys. Uh, some kind words, some kindness from our uh, one of our folks there. It's really appreciable when I hear something like that. And all right, so Nikhil. Nikhil says, are we into development or admin? We will be into both. Uh, uh, Nikhil and yes these uh, sessions will be uh, shared with you Nikhil and you can also find them on our uh, website also uh, the Hadoop uh, in um, kerneltraining.com is a place where you can look in okay so uh, let me see if I can take you there real quick there is it that's the website and you already have some of them you can log in once you log in you will have the all the complete session uh, the recorded sessions and everything available to you and uh, there's also a blog where you can learn a lot of stuff, guys. Um, there are also a bunch of courses you can have a look at them, guys. Okay, so for today, we will wrap it up here. And without much further ado, we'll go ahead and get started with our... Uh, so it looks like this still working on that, but that's the... That's our blog, guys. You guys can go ahead and also look at this blog and try to learn some of the things you know some of the concepts that we will be covering here are also listed here you can have a look at that they've done a we've done a lot of hard work has been put onto this one for you to uh, go ahead and learn as much as you can and that's a quick look at some of the con uh, some of those things and more of them are still uh, coming up guys okay all right gentlemen so let's go ahead and get started here so these are the things we will try to cover today, guys. Um, what is big data and Hadoop? The challenges of big data, 
technologies that support big data, what is Hadoop and why Hadoop and uh, some of the core components, the use cases of Hadoop, HDFS and MapReduce and statistics guys, okay, basic uh, look at, you know, statistical perspective is what it is. So let's get started here, okay. So as I proceed, gentlemen and ladies, what you guys can do is if you have any questions, please use the questions window and uh, and feel free to type in your questions. I will be watching in the questions window. And for those of you who wanted to already look at the recorded sessions, right? You can go to YouTube, guys. Okay, I will also ask Chandra to go ahead and uh, uh, share it with you. But if you go to YouTube and you type in kernel training, you should be able to uh, look at that one. That's the first one. Oops. That's the demo that I've been referring to, guys. Okay, you can go ahead and have a quick look at that and try to get a. Uh, good feel. I have given a pretty good introduction about uh, the different things uh, just in case you did not get a chance here. So those are some of the things that I've been explaining and uh, what is big data, what are the different components, how do things work in big data. I would definitely recommend I have shared some other perspectives, some use cases and things like that guys, okay. So some of them already registered here so I'm not going to repeat that in their interest because uh, they would uh, they have uh, joined us to go move ahead here. So please bear with me, gentlemen, okay? All right. So let's get started here. Go back here. So here and there, I will be asking for a few acknowledgments and things like that, guys. If you guys can quickly go ahead and type in uh, in the questions window, yes or no, as you follow me along, it will be appreciated, okay? Um, you can just type in a Y or N just to keep it short and simple, yes, okay. So that's big data. Big data is a term applied to data sets whose size is beyond the ability of commonly used software tools to capture, manage, and process the data within a tolerable elapsed amount of elapsed time, guys, okay. Let's try to understand what that is, okay. Imagine you have a laptop, guys, okay. This is your laptop and imagine you have about 1 GB of data, okay, I'm going to say that is 1 GB of data, okay. Now, what, what can we do? Well, I can go ahead and plug this data into my laptop, then what can we do? We can go ahead and process that. You can write a Java program or a .NET program or, you know, a shell script and things like that. You can successfully process the data as, okay. But let's say you have about Oops, go ahead and undo that, come back here, go ahead and select this. Let's say you have about 100 terabytes of data. For sake of simplicity, I will start with 100 terabytes of data. And by now, you may already have an idea, guys. Um, 1 terabyte equals 1,000 gigabytes, and then comes 1 petabyte, which equals to 1,000 terabyte, and then comes exabyte. Guys, okay, that equals to 1,000 petabytes, okay. Now, let's say you have that amount of data, you try to fit into your laptop, it won't fit. You try to fit into a server, it won't fit, guys, okay. So what happens, well, what, what, do, what do people do? Well, this is what people do, guys, or rather companies do, okay. What will they do? They'll set up a cluster. For now, think of cluster as a bunch of computers, guys, okay. So let's say I have a group of computers. For sake of simplicity, I will say we have about 100 nodes or 100 computers or 100 servers, okay, and so on. I'll put five of them there, guys, okay. Now, because the 100 terabytes doesn't fit on a single node or a single laptop or a computer, they will go ahead and first split this, guys, okay. So let's come here. Let's go ahead and say it's split into, let's say, one terabyte there, and let's say it's split into another terabyte there. And again, like that and so on, guys, okay? So, let me see. Because I'll come to your question in a second, buddy. Let me just complete this. So, there's one terabyte. And there's another terabyte. Okay? And so on. Like that, let's assume for sake of simplicity, they split it into 100 terabytes, guys. That is step one. Okay, how do you split them? Well, you write the code, right? Okay, once they split that kind of a data set, guys, what do they do? They go ahead and store that. Let's say they store it on data node 1 and 
let's say they store that on data node 2. Like that, they will go ahead and distribute all the 100 nodes of data. Okay, let's also take that and let's put that there. That's the third the terabyte and so on. Cool. And so on, guys. Okay, so how do you distribute the data? Well, that will, uh, you will again write code. And then, when you write code, guys, what happens is, here's what happens, guys, okay? What do you know, what, what you need to know is, you need to understand what is called multi-node communication. You need to understand what is called multi-process communication so that you're splitting the data, you're distributing the data, you know where which data is sitting and so on. You will also need to be familiar with concepts such as multi-threading, networking concepts, what is called fault tolerance and things like that, okay? So in other words, if you were to deal with that size of data, you need to be an expert in all these complex things, guys, okay? If you're a cricket player, what do you want to do? Well, you want to focus on batting and bowling, guys, okay? What is batting and bowling? Well, that's your business logic and that's your analytical logic. You don't want to go ahead and uh, you know, clean the stadium. You don't want to clean the chairs or the pitch before you do the batting and bowling, right? Your end users, who are your end users? Your audience. Your audience will be unhappy if you are going ahead and doing all these things uh, before batting and bowling. Okay? In a real world, gentlemen and ladies, what is happening is, if you want to work on big data, developers have to learn all these concepts. What happens? Well, that's a lot of time, a lot of complexity. That is a problem with, that is a fundamental problem with big data, guys. Okay? If you want to drive a car, what do you do? Well, you turn the key. What happens inside the car? Your fuel gets converted to electricity, guys. Okay? So, what is the problem? What is the solution here? The solution is, there's our Hadoop, guys. Okay? Let's go and choose that. See? There's our Hadoop. And what does it do? Well, Hadoop will take care of all these complexities for you. You don't have to worry about all these concepts. What do you do? Well, you. It simplifies your program. It gives you tools. It gives you the car to drive the... Uh, it gives you the key to drive the car, guys. What is the key? Well, those are your different tools. Your hive, your pig, your scoop and uh, OZ and all those stuff, guys, okay? It will take care of all these internal complexities. And what you, you focus? Well, we focus on batting and bowling. What is that? Well, that is our business logic and analytical logic, guys, okay? Am I making sense, guys? Can you give me a quick acknowledgement? Would you be kind enough just to type in a quick why in the questions window, just in case I'm making sense so far? Or are you finding it difficult and things like that? Please feel free to let me know. And uh, I hope the pace is also okay, guys. Okay. Cool. All right. Okay, guys. So, so that's a look at one perspective of uh, Hadoop, guys. Okay. Now, here's another perspective that I'm going to go ahead and also share, guys. Okay. I'm going to, if you come back to our definition, what am I saying? It is a term applied to data sets whose size is beyond the ability of commonly used software tools to capture and process. Okay? So now, okay, here's a quick question from Nikhil. Guys. Nikhil says, is Hadoop an architecture or can I say it's a concept or a model? Okay? It's not only an architecture, it's also a concept and it's also a model, uh, Nikhil. Okay? Again, I will refer to my demo video where I gave this perspective. Okay? In Hadoop, what they have done is, they have taken many good things. From cloud computing, they have taken the good things from grid computing and they have taken some of the good things out of the parallel computing. And they put all these things together in one framework that is called Hadoop. Hadoop is a framework, Nikhil, okay? And that framework has an architecture, okay? And, uh, and Hadoop is a solution to your big data is also another thing that you can think of, okay? It, it provides you a framework of tools, Nikhil, okay? And before I move on with Bikash's question, guys, let me go ahead and quickly share this perspective also so that I don't forget it and, uh, and it's uh, on, on and we are on the right track guys. Okay, one more time I'm gonna take my laptop. There's my one GB of data. Okay. One GB of data. Now what do I do? Let's say I go ahead and put it, select that, and I put it onto my laptop. And now we are processing this one GB of data. What is happening guys? Let's say this is what is happening. Okay. Let's say it's taking 10 hours time to process this data, but I want this to be in one hour. 
okay I want to complete this process in one hour okay we can still call this as big data guys we can call this as big data why it depends on the time amount of time your hardware your software is unable to process them in the amount of time that you want that is what this definition says guys we are unable to it is beyond the ability of our software and hardware to to manage to capture manage and process the data that is uh, big data that can also be referred as big data guys okay and we have three V's here the volume velocity and variety I have given an initial perspective guys okay in our earlier session I have indicated if this is a timeline from let's say this is where the mankind has started and let's say this is where 2003 is guys okay what happens if you were to take all this data that we have generated okay how much is it guys it's about 5x bytes of data okay so let's go here it's about 5x bytes of data guys what happened well suddenly in the year 2012 what happened well this is what happened guys let's go here let's go and put like that and what happened was in just one year 2012 we have generated about 2.7 zettabytes of data guys okay how much is a zettabyte well one zettabyte is 1000 petabytes guys in other words imagine this is the amount of data that was generated in the year 2012 or let me undo this one if this is the amount of data oops not that one, that one. oops not that that if this is five exabytes of data which was generated from the beginning of mankind till 2003 okay in just one year 2012 we have generated that amount of data okay that refers to that one what does that mean what that means is every two days starting from 2012 we are generating what the entire mankind has generated up to 2003 guys okay so what are we fundamentally looking at at a fundamental level we're looking at what is called the volume guys okay the volume is not double if you compare this one with this one it's not double triple ten times or hundred times it's exponentially huge guys okay and if you also notice or observe guys when I say we're generating that amount of data in every two days starting from the year 2012 what I mean what I mean is the rate at which we are generating the data is also very very huge guys so in other words it's exponentially huge is what it is guys okay so what does that mean well that means we are looking at the second aspect the speed at which we are generating the data is exponentially huge okay and what is happening today there's a new database out there guys what is that that's your internet and that's your other application sources of data your log files and things like that they're unstructured data sets what is happening your data could be in multiple varieties so what happens well your complexity of the coding is increasing okay that is the referred as a variety as your variety increases variety of your data increases your complexity of your applications is increasing guys well wow, okay why on the internet every company has their own formats of uh, exposing the data so one may be exposing in XML another may be expel, exposing in JSON and so on okay and and what are, what are these three things well that's what the big data is guys what is big data big data equals to V plus V plus V that equals to three V's okay that's what the big data refers to guys that's a shortcut to remember big data so gentlemen ladies am I making sense are you with me can you give me a quick acknowledgement please if I'm making sense and you guys are following me okay so far which company developed Hadoop Abiram, the company, the uh, actually it was Yahoo was one of the companies, uh, or actually the main guy was stuck cutting. He was working on uh, on a crawl on search engine uh, uh, framework, and he came across the Google paper, which they published a few years back. Okay, and he was greatly inspired, and then he started working on uh, Hadoop project. Uh, 
Abiram. Then what happened was, yeah, you know, Yahoo noticed that this guy started working on Hadoop uh, and they, they were interested in this project and they started investing and later, yeah, you know, it was, uh, it became part of the uh, free or rather the Apache open source uh, software foundation and that's how uh, it came into the existence, okay? And, uh, you know, the way he, he named it, Hadoop is his boy or his son. He was, uh, I think, three or four year kid. He used to play with the toy elephant. And when much for, when Hadoop, duck cutting was given, you know, enough uh, funding and things like that, they also asked him to name the project. So maybe he, out of his sentiment or things like that, he went ahead and named his uh, project after his son's toy, which is Hadoop uh, Abiram. Okay, so this little Hadoop gentleman and ladies, I'm going to be slightly sentimental. It's like our, uh, it's like our little Vinayaka guys. Okay, hopefully, or actually, it looks like our little Vinayaka is bringing in a lot of uh, opportunities and jobs. But that is what is the story behind it, is, guys. Okay. Okay, and let me go to Bikar's question here. Just one second, guys. He says, I'm from Java background, but in Hadoop, I will be completely new. But company wants 3 plus experience, so they want. So will they hire me? Absolutely, Bikar. Okay, so, you know, uh, Hadoop is just now picking up. You touch Java and .NET, there are hundreds of thousands of people there. Hadoop is something which is just now picking up uh, in the last one year, and so, uh, it's receiving a lot of pro prominence and importance and as I indicated earlier Abraham, every company is touching big data okay why they want to get insights from internet they want to get insights from other application sources such as log files email data sets and things like that Hadoop provides you an easy way to analyze these things uh, uh, who was that um, I think I lost Bikash okay so that is that is why everybody is touching it and they will say you know, they will say they want three years, they will also say they will say ten years. If they want a cricket player, they will say he needs to be, uh, you know, uh, good in basketball. They will also say they, he needs to be good in hockey. But if you are good in cricket, you are ready to go ahead and prove it to them. So, you know, they might say it's three plus experience, but what you can do is you will get a reasonably uh, good amount of experience by doing this course. And I think you can easily be able to project it. What you can also do, Vikash, is... Uh, the concepts that you learn in during this uh, during this course, right? Um, you can take these concepts and apply it in your own company and in your own use cases. What I will do is later, when when you have a chance, you share some of the stuff that you may do, either personally or maybe uh, uh, personally or privately, um, and then I will give you a few hints and direction how you can go ahead and project as if you have done a similar kind of project at your company, and that will help you. Okay. Like that, what you can do is you can also add a bit, a bit more experience and you will be able to support yourself. Cool, Vikash? Okay. All right, let's move on here, guys. So, big data, guys. We have, Internet is becoming the new database, guys. What do we have here? Well, we have lots of things which are going on Internet and other sources, guys. Okay, so let me just bring up my tool here. Take a snap. So discount and let's see what we have. Well, what we are indicating here is big data. It's a combination of transactions, interactions, and observations, guys. Okay? Transactions are those things which are inside your database. What you say, what you update, what you delete are referred as transactions, guys. Okay? Then you have what is called interactions. What is an interaction? Well, you're on Facebook, you're on Twitter, and things like that. You're interacting. What you write is what is referred as interaction, guys, okay? Because you're interacting with your your friends, your relatives, and so on. And then you have observations, guys. What are those observations? Observations are these things, the log files and any other sources of information, right? Uh, your application logs, your other server logs, and things kind of things are referred to uh, the observations, okay? What do companies do? Well, they, they generally go into their database, get the insights, okay? And uh, what is that? That's like going to going to the rivers and finding the fish. Okay, what do we have? Well, we have seas and oceans. Say, what is seas? That seas, the interactions are the seas, and then the other sources of data is becoming your oceans. If you're able to find fish here, okay, if you're able to find fish here, you can find a lot of fish in the seas and oceans. Okay, in rivers, if you're able to find fish, what I'm trying to say is you can find more fish in 
seas and oceans and those things is what uh, the, uh, the companies are looking for guys okay what we are indicating in this graph gentlemen and ladies okay what we have is as the volume of the data is increasing the complexity of the coding is increasing that's where Hadoop comes in your complexity of the coding will not increase as the uh, volume of the data increases your no matter how big your data is your complexity of the coding will remain the same all right so it is independent of the size of the data guys okay and different varieties guys you can analyze the web logs you can analyze the rfid sensors and so on many companies many uh, other institutions uh, like weather and so on weather institution and uh, weather data center rather uh, what they're doing is they're opening up their data government is opening up their data and they're asking people to see if they can find any patterns in their funds in their transactions and things like that and uh, be able to figure out some useful insights and see if there are any any fraud which is happening or by opening up the weather data sets right what uh, they, they want is if anybody is able to find a pattern where we can predict the cyclones and things like that it will be pretty helpful in taking some measures and things like that guys okay that is the idea so gentlemen ladies are you with me can I move on to the next slide please quick acknowledgement guys great thank you guys some of you have been very religious in uh, giving me an acknowledgement. I appreciate it, guys. Just give me one second here. Okay. All right, gentlemen. Why big data? Big data is driving the demand. We are generating more data than ever, guys. Remember, we just discussed every two days we are generating about what the entire mankind has generated up to 2003, guys. The speed at which we are generating is very, very huge, all right? And what is that data that we are talking about? Well, some of that is financial transactions with uh, sensitive information removed. Why, why would they expose financial transactions? Well, to see if anybody can find some patterns which will help them in figuring out some fraud. Okay? Sensor networks, guys. Okay? What do these sensors do if you have any hardware and things like that? You can go ahead and hook up sensors. And these sensors, at every millisecond, they're capable of generating thousands and thousands of uh, records guys okay what do you do you have to store but that that will end up in billions and billions of uh, records in just a day okay if you go to traditional databases they will be very expensive guys that's where Hadoop comes in and provides you a very cheap solution rather any expensive solution okay and the log files you can put all your log files together and you can get some very very useful insights okay these are the things that companies were not really looking at that much guys they had a look at them but the look was different they, they they were looking at a very narrow sense okay they were never looking at, at it from a sense of R&D or some research and uh, trying to find more insights uh, the way they are looking has looking at these things have changed today that's what Hadoop presents us, us guys okay and there's your email and text messages again you put put together your 15 to 20 year uh, email data sets of a company there are very very useful insights that we can go ahead and infer get out of that similarly social media guys your Twitter and all those things what you discuss very casually will contain some very very useful insights guys okay again if you refer to my earlier session I have I did explain about those scenarios guys so I've been a slightly particular about referring to that one if you get a chance do have a look at it guys okay we'll also try to discuss as we move along but that's a quick look at it okay so there's why big data we're generating new data faster than ever we've just discussed about that you know one of the reasons is ubiquitous internet connectivity guys okay our new prime minister Modi he wants every village in India to be connected by internet fiber optics and so on guys okay what does that mean more data more the people get on more the data more the chance for analytics and in trying to understand what the problems of the people are and it will be much more better in uh, in addressing them guys okay so that's good news we have two kinds of data guys one is user generated data and one is machine generated data okay what is user generated data user generated data is something which you enter let's say you're you typing in something or you're entering in Facebook LinkedIn and so on or any social networking site that refers to the user generated data what is machine generated data as you type in 
there's a lot of data which is getting generated in the server log files, you know, your IP address and things like that. And you have videos, uh, CC cameras and things like that. They are recording a lot of uh, stuff, guys, okay? That refers to machine generated data. You go to any street, any of the major cities and towns in the world today, they're hooking up additional uh, CC cameras and along with them lots of sensors are getting hooked up. Why? For the case of security, guys, okay? To improve the security. and. Uh, and, and lots of data comes in as a result of that and they can be analyzed, okay, when, when time is, uh, uh, when it is needed, all right. And here's a quick snapshot of what is happening on a daily basis. Twitter, about 340 million uh, messages, guys, okay. Twitter is one of the main uh, door uh, for people to do the sentimental analysis and things like that, or it's one of the thing, and we will do a project uh, how in how to use Twitter and try to understand the sentimental analysis uh, in, uh, in our course, guys, okay? There's Facebook, they generate about 2.7 billion comments, likes, and companies are crazy about something called likes, guys, okay? Again, I did give some uh, example about that one in our demo, so again, have a look at that one. And then there's large hadron collider, guys, okay? I'm a very physics enthusiast. I'm a, a huge fan of physics, guys, okay? Uh, when they did this experiment somewhere in Europe, they said they've discovered something called God particle. I won't go too much into physics, guys, okay? But what happens? That's what they generate in, in, in a day. 68 terabytes of data. Every second or every minute, guys, you know, from what I recall, they were generating millions and millions of images when that experiment was going on, okay? They used Hadoop to go ahead and uh, analyze all those images is what I have read at that time, guys, okay? So that's a quick look about uh, those, uh, you know, on big data. And moving on here, guys, let me check to see if there are any questions here. Come here. Come here. Okay, if you have any questions, please feel free to type in there, guys, okay? And let me take a question also before my... I move on, guys. Abhiram says, Abhiram, I think I answered your first question about which company developed Hadoop. Do they have a proprietary ownership or is it open source? Okay, sorry, Abhiram, I missed that, okay? It is open source, actually. The Apache Software Foundation, what they release is the, uh, is the core or rather the main uh, Hadoop, Abhiram. And then there are other companies such as Trodera. Apache Software Foundation does not give you support. They will just release the software. If you need any support, they will not give you. They will say, if you find any problem, they will say, open a ticket. That's where it comes in other companies such as Cloudera, you know, Hortonworks and things like that. What they have done is, they have taken the Apache Software Foundation version of Hadoop, and then they went ahead, made a few changes, and they also provide support. They, they put together everything. You can use their tools to install everything together without really manually doing these things, and you can work on them. If you find any problem, you can also work with them, and they will charge you for the support and things like that, okay? The Cloudera's uh, version is uh, one of the most popular one, um, and then there's the Hortonworks, but at a core, you know, Hadoop, the Apache software Hadoop is like the ambassador for and if you learn that one, you know, all the others are different cars. You're good in. If you learn Ambassador, you can also drive a BMW or a Benz. That's what the other things are, guys, okay? So what we will be doing is I will show you from an, uh, an Ambassador perspective, and I will be showing you from a BMW, and I'll leave you there. The Ambassador is the Apache Software Hadoop, and the BMW is the Cloudera. These are the two things I will cover during our course. Once you learn these two cars, you're ready to go out and drive any car, uh, okay? Let me know if that helps, Abraham. Cool. All right, let's move on here. And this is what I have, guys. Okay, notice here, we have something called structured and unstructured data, guys. Structured data refers to something or refers to something which is in your database. If you have a table in your database, guys, what do you have? Well, generally, you would know what is in parent, child, relationship, and constraint. That is called the schema, guys. The schema is referred as the structured data, okay? Uh, whereas when you take the data, which is on net or application logs and other sources of uh, uh, other applications, right? You do not have a parent, you do not have a child, or you do not know anything about relationships or constraints, okay? That, in other words, short and sweet, you do not know the schema. 
that is called the unstructured data guys okay again structured data is something which sits in your database anything else is unstructured data guys okay what's happening today companies are going to the database to give, to find insights they're going to the rivers to find the fish what are we saying go to seas go to oceans what do you do there's more data there the more the data more the value higher the value guys okay so you'll get more fish there you can also you should go here and also try to fish here is what we are indicating guys okay what is happening with unstructured data when you do not know the schema is it is increasingly be becoming complex to analyze and get some meaningful information or rather some useful insights from there guys that is what the challenge or the opportunity is okay okay gentlemen can I move on to the next slide cool all right so traditionally what is happening what were guys doing what were companies doing before this one is here's what was happening guys okay if they come across what is called big data what they would do is they would use a powerful server again I may have given this example earlier in my uh, demo guys but just give me a, uh, a quick uh, opportunity to review this imagine you go to a ATL office and in the ATL office what do you see well you see a PhD guy is standing there and collecting the bills what will happen well for a PhD guy you will end up paying a lot of salary Let's say you're paying him 1 lakh rupees per month. What will he do? Well, he'll be able to collect about 10 to 15 bills per one hour, guys. Okay? We can also do this, guys. Instead of hiring a PhD guy, we can hire uh, uh, about maybe, let's say, 10 people who have completed their degree. For the sake of simplicity, just bear my example, guys. Okay? So I took 10 guys who completed their degree. And what I will do, I will, instead of paying them 1 lakh rupees per month, I will pay them 10,000 rupees per month okay and what does that mean well I get about 10 people for 1 lakh rupees and what can they do well each one can still collect about 10 to, uh, 10 to 15 bills per one hour okay so what does that mean in one hour I'm able to collect about 100 to 150 bills per hour whereas with a PhD guy in in one day if he works for 10 hours then that's what we're able to collect okay so what a PhD guy will take one full day in one hour I'm able to accomplish guys okay traditional architectures you know they they use something called a powerful server what's a powerful server they're called enterprise class servers guys you have two different kinds of servers uh, uh, one of them is an enterprise class server so let's say this is an oops go here this is an enterprise class server and you have another one what is that? The other class is called the commodity hardware or commodity class servers, guys. Okay, these, okay, they are expensive. Okay, these are expensive servers, guys. So let's go down and say they are expensive, and uh, they cost anywhere from dollar twenty k to hundred k and so on. They could be higher also. And the reason they're expensive is because, guys, they give you a high reliability and uptime. The manufacturer will say, hey, I'm giving you 99% reliability in uptime, okay? Now you take the commodity hardware. Commodity hardware, on the other hand, is inexpensive, guys, okay? Oops. It is inexpensive next they cost in the room five thousand dollars okay and uh, they don't give uh, they can go down any time they get the in other words the uh, the manufacturer does not give you a high reliability and uptime they can go down anytime there's no reliability or guarantee so what do we do that's why there are there is something called replication which we will talk but these this is the enterprise class server this is the commodity server guys okay our commodity server is something like our degree guys in our ATL office, whereas this one is like a PhD guy in your ATL office guys, okay? So what are we doing instead of using PhD guys? We will start using what is called commodity hardware guys, okay? So let's come back here. Uh, Abhishek, uh, the enterprise class servers are expensive. They generally range in fair starting from $20,000 to $100,000 and so on. And... Uh, they're highly reliable okay so the manufacturer gives you high reliability and uptime 
whereas commodity hardware are much inexpensive, they're around five thousand dollars. The only problem with them is they can fail any time. So though that's the reason we have some concept of replication, which is uh, inbuilt you when we are using these servers. Okay, does that help, Abhishek? Okay, so again, what I'm trying to indicate here. Okay, what I'm trying to indicate here is with big data when they were using powerful servers, what, what would happen was they would go ahead and only store a limited amount of data guys. Okay, one PhD guy can only take up only 10 to 15 in one hour, whereas 10, 10 degree guys can take lots of data. What does that mean? There is a limit on how much a powerful server can process guys. Okay, short and sweet. What is happening? Well, if you have very, very big data, let's say you have one terabyte of data. Let's go ahead and say that is one terabyte of data. Let's say I'm able to fit that onto, select that, oops, select that. I can fit it onto a computer. Let's say that is 10 terabytes, I can fit it onto that one. But let's say what well, that is 100 terabytes. I cannot fit that into a single computer. What do we do? We will maintain, we are losing, we'll have to throw a lot of data. Even if we were to go ahead and maintain multiple servers, okay, oops put there. Even if I were to increase the number of servers, what will happen is if, if I go ahead and split my data and start distributing the data, the complexity will increase. Yes, the complexity will, will increase and your expenses will also increase exponentially. That is what the problem that the companies are facing. Okay, That is what we mean by you know storing the data storing large amounts of data and then if we were to store the data processing that analyzing that is also going to be very difficult because we need to know a lot of uh, concepts advanced concepts such as um, multi-node multi-threading and all those things that we have discussed guys okay so what's happening traditional systems cannot scale if you were to add more nodes, you know, your complexity will increase, your expenses will go exponentially, and if one of the node goes down, you'll have to manage the partitions, the vertical partitioning, horizontal partitioning, all those things become very, very heady. So those are some of the problems of the big data, guys, okay? Am I making sense, gentlemen? Can you give me a quick acknowledgement, please, gentlemen and ladies? Cool. So that's where comes our Hadoop, guys, okay? What does Hadoop do? Well, what is Hadoop? It's a software framework, guys. What is a framework? A framework is something your car has a framework, guys. What does a car do? Well, you turn the key, it converts the fuel to electricity. How is the fuel getting converted to electricity? It's a very sophisticated mechanical engineering process which is happening. But you do not have to be a mechanical engineer to drive a car, right? So in a similar way, so that's why it's called a framework. It's an engine, guys. A framework can also be compared to an engine. What does a car do? It's hiding a lot of complex things from you as a user. A driver does not necessarily have to be a mechanical engineer. What does Hadoop do? Hadoop is also a framework like that, guys, an engine like that. What does it do? It will hide a lot of complex things inside. For what? Well, for supporting data-intensive distributed applications, right? Or in other words, when we have large amounts of data and when we have to go ahead and do some programming or analytics and things like that, it will allow us to easily go ahead and do that, guys, okay? It is free. We don't have to pay. That is a good thing. Uh, and it enables applications to work with thousands of nodes and petabytes of data, guys, okay? What does that mean? Well, what that means, guys, let us say let me go ahead and take this example, guys, okay? I'm going to remove this, remove this, remove this, 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 okay? So there's my data. Let's say I take a few more enterprise class servers, guys, okay? If I have a single enterprise class server, let me go ahead and actually blank this. Come here. Let us say I have a single enterprise class server, and let's say for sake of simplicity, this has about one terabyte of data. Okay, let's say we are doing some processing on this and let's say this takes about, for sake of simplicity again, I'll say it takes about 10 of us guys, okay? So what do I do now? Now I go ahead and add, let's say, another server, okay? Now what do I do? If I were to go ahead and put 0 0.5 terabytes here, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 there, Oops, 
0 0.5 there and I will also put oops come here 0 0.5 terabytes of data here okay now there is no guarantee because I have split my data. In other words, as I increase my number of nodes, my power, my processing power increases, guys, okay? There is no guarantee that these two will do it in five hours. That is the problem. What does that mean? There is no guarantee, you, there is no guarantee that the, your code will work, the complexity also will increase, guys, okay? But here is the case with the commodity hardware, guys. Let us say, I take one commodity hardware and let's say I take one terabyte of data and let's say it takes 10 hours to process the data guys, okay? Now let's say if I use two commodity hardware, I install Hadoop, okay? And I split the data here and here. Now if I were to go ahead and process that guys, it will almost give me a guarantee that it will get than five hours okay unless we run into any network issues and things like that and if we were to go ahead and increase this to let's say 10 servers what will happen our computation time will decrease 10 will become 5 then it will become 3 2 and so on if I use 10 nodes it will it will do the entire uh, processing in one hour what is that that is called linear scalability as you increase the number of nodes, okay, and another important thing is the complexity of the coding will also not increase. The complexity of the coding will also remain the same, okay, and, and, and if you notice, as the time is decreasing, it is in a certain ratio. What is that? That is what is the linearity. As you're processing, power increases, your computation time decreases, guys. That is the, uh, that is the power of Hadoop. And your complexity of the code will not change, whether it is 1 GB of data, 10 terabytes or 100 terabytes. That is what we mean by enabling applications to work with thousands of nodes and petabytes of data, okay? And it was inspired by Google's MapReduce, guys, okay? So what is it with Google, you know, you, you might wonder, uh, uh, or if I were to ask, guys, you know, Google did it, okay, so if Google did it, why should we? Uh, do it, why should we learn it and things like that, okay? So here is the reason, guys. Google became successful by learning these concepts, right? We can go back to our companies and organizations and help them in being successful. That is why we are here trying to learn how to guys, okay? Am I making sense, guys? Can you give me a quick acknowledgement, please? Very good. Okay, so gentlemen, ladies, here's what I'm going to do, guys, okay? It's about 20, 21, 11. Let's take a short five minute break here. I would like to have a glass of water. Just come back and take your questions. You can type in your questions. Once I come back, you can go ahead and uh, 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 we can continue, guys, okay? So just give me about five minutes here. You also try to stretch out and come back. 21, 17 or 9, 17 will regroup, guys. I'll just leave this open, okay? Thank you, guys. I appreciate that. Okay, so I hope you guys are uh, back, guys. Can you quickly type in if you guys are back, uh, folks? Okay, great. Thank you, guys. Appreciate that. And uh, thank you. Nikhil says, Hadoop is predefined package for analysis of huge amount of data. Acceptable. That's, a, that's an acceptable uh, view of uh, uh, saying it, Nikhil. Okay. And uh, thank you, guys, for coming back. So we'll move on here, guys, okay? So what is it uh, Hadoop is doing, guys? Hadoop is providing us a framework of tools, guys, okay? What is the framework of tools? Well, if you remember, it is it has one brain, guys, the brain. We called it as HDFS, guys. We'll talk a little bit more about it in the coming up sessions. But if you remember, in a first session, in our thing, you know, Hadoop has a brain that is the HDFS, guys, okay? And 
What is HDFS guys? Well, it's a group of computers together. They act as if they're one computer guys, okay? Remember our apartment. In our apartment, uh, imagine an apartment building where you have a ground floor. Let's say there are about 10 ground floor apartments guys, okay? Each of the ground floor apartment, if there is a chair in one apartment, you cannot see from the other apartment. But let's say you have a first floor on top of all these 10 apartments and this in this first floor guys, there are no walls. There is only one apartment over the top of all these 10 apartments. What is that? Well, that's a group of apartments which together, it, it acts like as if it's one apartment, right? That's your HDFS. HDFS is a layer above your group of computers, guys, okay? And, uh, and it is also called the brain. Why? In our brain, we store the thoughts, guys. In HDFS, what do you store? You only store different kinds of data, okay? So that could be in any variety variety of data <clears throat> so that's same why well, it could be audio it could be video it could be text and it could be log files and so on guys that is you store different kinds of data guys okay so what do you do with that well you go ahead and process the data how do you process the data well imagine if data is like our thoughts in our brain then how do we analyze our thoughts well we have our heart guys what is that that's the map reduce the heart of Hadoop is map reduce guys okay and what does map reduce do map reduce will allow you to go ahead and analyze the data analyze the data in uh, HDFS okay but there's a problem with map reduce guys what is that you need to be an expert in Java you need to be an expert in map reduce guys okay so what do we have we have two eyes guys what are the eyes well we have hive hive is one of the eyes okay so what is hive Let's go then. Same. It's hive. And what does hive do? Let's go and select that. Hive. It will take simple SQL like commands as input. SQL like commands as input. Let me go and put that there. So it will take that as input. It will convert them to Java map reduce programs and it will run on HDFS. Okay? So in other words, what is Hive? Hive is one of the keys to your car. What happens inside your car? There's a lot of uh, complex things happening, okay? Uh, what is Hive doing? Hive is hiding it. What do you do to drive your car? You use Hive, okay? One tool. Another tool, there's Pig, guys. What does Pig do? Pig. Go here. Pig will take simple English like commands as input, guys. Let me go down. See if I can put it there. It will take English like scripting statements as input. Select that, go there, and it will take the English like statements as input. It will convert them to Java map reduce programs and analyze the data on HDFS. That's another key to your uh, car called Hadoop, guys. Okay? So, what is happening? You do not have to be an expert in map reduce and you do not have to be an expert in HDFS. But as software engineers, we try to understand and learn the concepts of these things to use Hive and Pick, guys, okay? And Hadoop also has a stomach, guys. What is the stomach? Well, in, in our stomach, we store the data, right? I'm sorry, in our stomach, we store the food, okay? Before we store our food, we go ahead and chew it. In other words, we modify our food and then we go ahead and store it in our stomach. That's what HBase does, guys, okay? What is HBase? HBase is a database of Hadoop. Hadoop is not a database. What is Hadoop? Hadoop is a distributed file system. What's a distributed file system? It's a group of computers. Together, they act as if they're one computer, guys, okay? What will HBase allow you? HBase will allow you to modify the data on HDFS. What will Hive and Pig allow you? Hive and Pig will allow you to analyze the data. With our eyes, we analyze. With our stomach, we so modify and store the data. So that's why HBase is called the database of Hadoop, guys. And What's happening in today's world is there are lots of databases in every company, guys. You have a MySQL server, you have a Oracle database, and you have a SQL server database, and many other next generation warehouse databases and things like that, guys. Okay? So what are all these things? Well, these many times what companies would like to do is they would like to get the data, save the data from the database into Hadoop, okay, let's go down, select that. They would like to 
save the database and uh, data from database into Hadoop guys. Okay, how do you do that? Well, that's where it comes in another tool. What is that? That's scoop. Let's come here. Come here. That's scoop guys. Okay, what will scoop do? Scoop will allow us to transfer the data from any database into Hadoop. Most of the databases have the support for uh, scoop guys. Okay, they will transfer structured data. Remember data inside your database is structured data guys. Okay, because you know the schema. If you have a table, you know the parent, child, relationship and so on, right? So that is why it is referred as structured data and scoop will transfer structured data into database that is called importing. You can also take the data and transfer it back to different databases guys. That is called exporting. Okay, so the data transfer of structured data is done by scope. Okay, but what's happening today? There's a new database, guys. That's the internet and the application logs. Okay, your databases are rivers. These are the rivers. That's the oceans and the seas, guys. Okay, what, what are we doing? Well, we can also get the data from here and save it to HDFS. Then you can use Hive and pick to go ahead and analyze the data, guys. Okay, now how do you get the data? Well, that's where it comes in flow. Let's go ahead and type in there. Select that. On the servers and save it on HDFS. That data is used by Hive and Pick to analyze, guys. Okay? Apart from that, we also have another tool. Okay? That's called Uzi, guys. Okay? In real world, what happens is many times you will go ahead and work on all this different kinds of tools guys okay say we'll see what we do after that is we will go ahead and we will not run them individually we will schedule them in other words I will run some scripts in Hive get the output give it as input to pick I may write some scripts get some output give it as input to scope then I will go ahead and transfer them to any of these databases okay so how do you schedule them one after one that's where it comes in OC guys okay also, we also have another tool, guys. What is that? Well, that's our latest tool, which is Spark. Spark is one of the tools which is receiving a lot of attention today, guys, okay? Because it makes the Hadoop 10 to 100 times faster. It, it performs what is called in-memory analytics, guys, okay? So what are all these things? These are some of the concepts. So these are the main core concepts that I will be covering as part of our course, guys. Apart from that, there are administration concepts also which I have not listed here. Those also we'll be covering towards end. And for those of you who are in a hurry, you can also refer to our previous session recordings and try to catch up on the admin sessions if you'd like to complete it early, guys, okay? And, uh, and all these things, guys, they are free. What are they? They are the framework of tools. What are the framework of tools? Well, Hadoop has one brain, one heart, two eyes, one stomach, a tool to transfer structured data, a tool to transfer unstructured data, a workflow scheduling team tool and an in-memory analytics tool. This is Hadoop guys, okay? It provides us a framework of tools. They help us run applications on big data. What do they do? When you have your data which you need to distribute onto multiple nodes, the complexity of the coding increases. These will help us uh, uh, run the application so write the code in a simple way guys okay and they're free then open open source so you can go ahead and look at the source if you'd like to that's what it is guys okay so am I making sense guys here's a question from Bikarash guys okay he says is Taze going to replace map bridges no Taze is just an additional component which is going to faster make your uh, Hive and pick a bit faster because okay I have not uh, gone too deep into that but what this and uh, this will do is the way Hive and pig work is they will generate something called directed acyclic graphs they follow a certain process okay that that's a bit time consuming or that takes a few seconds to few seconds okay this will fast and may make that process much faster and makes your hive uh, and uh, pig and other tools which run on map reduce faster Okay, Bikash. Okay. So, so that's about Hadoop, guys. Okay. Now, we will go ahead and get into 
what is called the logical architecture guys before we move on guys any questions guys any of you would like to come on air or anything we can spend a few minutes on asking questions and things like that if you have or if you'd like to verify uh, we can take a break here and we can continue if you don't have any questions I can continue here guys okay so just give me a quick acknowledgement guys how you guys are doing are you guys following things are looking okay for you good great I hope the pace is also okay guys so great appreciate that guys okay thank you again so let's go ahead and proceed here and again if you have any questions please feel free to let me know and we will continue guys okay so the logical architecture guys okay what is Hadoop? Hadoop is a distributed file system guys okay it has you can think of Hadoop as an IT company guys let's go here okay think of Hadoop as an IT company guys this whole thing is one IT company oops in this IT company imagine there are a couple of departments that's your software department and that's your hardware department guys okay the hardware department takes care of the storage the software department takes care of the computations so or the execution guys okay some scope of administrator in Hadoop okay Nikhil okay so Nikhil says uh, it's uh, I think Nikhil is interested in administrator guys so Nikhil in administration what I will cover is apart from the installation of the components of various components we will cover uh, the backup and the maintenance, the disaster recovery process and uh, how do you uh, take the, uh, again, the backup and the maintenance of your metadata, application data and uh, commissioning a node, decommissioning a node, how do you do those things. Um, if possible, you know, I will also try to show them on, on our cluster, how we do them and uh, what else we have, how do you upgrade uh, to the next version. We will also cover Hadoop 2.0. Uh, is another one and uh, those are some of them uh, Nikhil okay I will try to list uh, additional uh, things uh, apart from them and I will try to put together a slide for that I somehow missed that part of it but I will try to pour, make a note of that and Chandra if you're listening to me buddy can you just make a note of that we will try to go ahead and uh, we'll try to add a slide on some of the administration components that we are covering so just an FII Okay, great. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, so again, coming back to guys, there's our IT company, there's our hardware and software department. Okay, so what is <coughs> storage, guys? Remember, <coughs> what do we have? Well, the storage, it's nothing but it's a group of computers. Let me clean this up a little bit. Okay, your storage is nothing but it's a bunch of computers there sitting, and your group of computers together. They act as if they are first computer. So there is your first floor. In your first floor, there are no walls, right? In the ground floor, there are walls, okay? So what will we do? Well, let's say if I have a chair, I'll call this a chair. If I have a chair, oops, go down and adjust this a little bit. Okay? If I have this chair and I go ahead and have it in this apartment, guys, and then I go ahead and come to this apartment, I will not be able to see this chair because of the walls, guys, okay? But let's say I go ahead, save this chair in the first floor, then I come into this apartment or any of the apartments and go into the first floor, I will be able to look at that chair. What does that mean? Well, the storage is a logical layer which is acting as a single layer. What does that mean? If I have a file which is saved in my HDFS, no matter from where I log in, any of these computers are log in, I go into my logical layer, I will be able to see that uh, file, guys. That is what that refers to, okay? So, your storage is your hardware department, that's your software department, guys. That's how you can think of logically, okay? Um, and then, let's move on here. There's the storage layer. Distributed file system, guys, okay? Again, group of computers, together they act as if they're one computer, guys, okay? At a computer level, they're all regular OS file system, so uh, you would install your Linux OS on all of them. Traditional Linux is supported, but you can also work with Windows, guys, okay? So every computer, every Linux node uh, will have Linux uh, installed, and what will it do? It will go ahead and maintain a fixed size blocks of 64 megabytes that are replicated, guys. Okay, let's 
let's take another look at this. We may have looked at this earlier, guys. Okay. So let's say that's my cluster. Let's say I have a group of nodes or computers. Okay. And now let's imagine we have a file which is about, for sake of simplicity, let's assume it's about 100 megabytes file, guys. Okay. I will start with say it's about 100 megabytes. Oops. Now, what I would like to do is I would like to go ahead and save this file into HDFS. What will Hadoop do as well? Ideally, this one would be in our laptop. Let's say it in the laptop. And what will you do? You will give a Hadoop command saying Hadoop FS port. Okay. What it will do is it will go ahead and split it into two components, guys. Okay. Let us say, let's say it will 36 megabytes guys, okay, 64 and so come here, so that is 64 megabytes, come here, so that is 36 megabytes guys, okay, that is the first step, it will split the data, then what will you do, it will go ahead and save the data onto one of the nodes, let's say it will save it there, then what will you do, it will take this one, oops, and save it there guys okay that is called the distribution guys then what will you do it will go out and replicate the data whatever is here will be will also be saved here oops will also be saved here and will also be saved here as a backup why remember we discussed how do we work on what is called commodity hardware guys what is commodity hardware at any point of time they can go down Right? If I go down, we'll be at a loss of data. Just for that, we replicate the data. We maintain additional backups, guys. Okay? Similarly, this one, the block B, is also backed up here. It is also backed up here. Okay? So that's all. That is what is called replication, guys. Okay? For 100 MB, it splits in the orders of 64 and 36, guys. Okay? Let's say I had 150 MB. What would it do? It will split it in the order of 64 plus 64 plus 22. Gentlemen, ladies, am I making sense? Are you with me? Great. Thank you, guys. Okay. So, that is what the replication is, guys. And it's right ones read many times optimized for streaming in and streaming out guys okay imagine you're uploading video to YouTube we do well you upload your YouTube to video it is written once okay it is written to the YouTube servers guys okay all of our friends all of our relatives maybe they are interested in looking at our video okay what do they do they come onto the internet and they watch it what is happening you have uploaded it once but it is being read or analyzed by many other people guys okay similarly the data sets that you put in Hadoop are like uploading a video, YouTube video into HDFS, guys. Once you write it there, everybody will come there and will read the data from there, guys. We'll read these files uh, from Hadoop. So that is why it is called write once, read many times, okay? If you take the first letter of it, W-O-R-M, it is called worm. That means it's, it's write once, read many times, guys, okay? It is optimized for streaming in, and streaming out. What is streaming? Let us say... You're watching a three-hour video of Amitabh, Amitabh Bachchan. What will happen? Well, on YouTube, you don't have to download the complete three-hour video. First, the first two minutes, YouTube will send the first two minutes of your video. Then, as you're watching the first two minutes, the next two minutes is being sent to you. That is what is streaming, guys, okay? You send them part by part. We'll talk more about uh, streaming in the coming up section, guys, okay? But that is what is streaming, guys, okay? Making sense, guys? Can I move to the next slide? Can you give me a quick acknowledgement? Cool. Okay. And then comes the execution layer, guys. Okay. Remember, this I'm going to call as the hardware department in the IT company. This is the software department, guys. Okay. In hardware, they are just responsible for 
storing the servers and making sure enough storage is available guys okay in software your actual execution is taking place that's where you write your programs in your software department you write your programs guys okay so that's why we call map reducers the execution layer where the actual execution takes place and it is being tracked monitored and things like that guys okay hadoop map reduce that is the heart of hadoop guys what does it do well it will read the data it will process the data and it will analyze the data on hdfs guys okay it is responsible for running a job in parallel on many servers so a job can be run on many servers in parallel and it will take care of the parallelization guys remember what we do we just focus on the business logic or in other words we just focus on batting and bowling which is the business logic and the analytical logic and you do not worry about the internal parallelization internal multi-node communication and all that stuff okay it will be taken care of by the map reduce layer okay another important thing guys okay not only Hadoop is distributing the data over here it has distributed this is a process of distribution of the data data guys okay next what we will do is we will go ahead and write different scripts here you may write a script in SQL or you may write in uh, English like scripting statement or Linux like commands okay you will write the scripts here what will happen this is where your code will get generated guys okay so let's say I will use that when you write code in these things imagine code gets generated now what will happen this code will be sent to the place where your data sits successfully and it will be executed there. This is what we mean by the code is moving to the place where the data sits and getting executed. That is also called as data locality guys. Okay. So why am I saying that? Let me come back here. Yeah. So that is what is data locality and your code is moving to the place where the data is sitting as I covered about that in my earlier session guys again when the time comes when the other slides come I'll explain a little bit more about that okay and it is responsible uh, and Hadoop will take care of that guys you will not uh, worry about deploying the code Hadoop will move the code around and deploy the code you do not worry okay what you do you just turn the key that's your SQL commands English and Linux like commands and other commands that you give in Hive, Pig and so on guys okay internally all these things are taken care of by Hadoop and it handles retrying a task that fails. Okay, here's another important thing, guys. Okay, let's say if the server went down, I said we have a backup here. I have a backup of block A, yellow color there, and here also. So that is called fault tolerance of storage, guys. Okay, and let's say if there is a computation happening here, a computation code was sent here, computation starts happening, suddenly this node also goes down. What will happen? Well, that code the computation will be reinitiated on another node where your block is sitting. Who will take care of that? That will be monitored and taken care of by Hadoop guys. We don't worry about it. In other words, that is called fault tolerance of computation. So Hadoop not only provides fault tolerance from a storage aspect, but it also provides fault tolerance from a computation aspect guys. Okay? What it is doing is it is not only distributing the storage, it is also distributing the computation guys okay distributed storage distributed computation are very very complex things guys okay it is not possible for ordinary developers to write that kind of code uh, in real world and what does Hadoop do well it will give you a key and it will take care of all the internal complexities guys okay am I making sense guys can you give me a quick acknowledgement Okay, great. Thank you, guys. So, jobs consist of special map and red, reduce operations, guys. Okay, map and reduce is like your batting and bowling. That's where you write your business logic and your analytical logic, guys. Okay, we'll talk more about that. But for now, as a cricket player, you just focus on batting and bowling. You don't worry about cleaning the stadium and cleaning the chairs and things like that. Who takes care of that? That's Hadoop. Your Hadoop gives you a stadium where you can just right away come and do the batting and the bowling guys okay so again what we are showing here is how do you if you give it some data what it will do is it will split your data into many small pieces then it will move the computation to the place where the data sets guys okay so as I explained here once we distribute our data you go and do a little bit of clean up here get rid of that 
get rid of that, get rid of that, okay? Once we distribute our data, our code, we write our scripts in the form of these things, guys. So using high, big, and things like that, the code is generated and the code will move to the place where your data sits. It will execute in parallel. The process of moving the code to the data, place where the data sits is called as data locality, guys. That is what we mean by moving the computation to the data, okay? And why Hadoop? Well, why Hadoop, guys? Well, virtual execution and storage spam many nodes. In other words, when our computation is happening uh, in multiple nodes, guys, that is referred as distributed computation. It is, it is not easy to do this kind of distributed computation, guys, okay? Hadoop or the MapReduce framework will take care of the distributed computation. Your computation which is ha happening across multiple nodes, Hadoop will, MapReduce will manage, will allow you to treat it as a single computation which is happening on a single computer, guys. That is what we mean by virtual execution, okay? And it scales linearly with course and disk, guys. What does that mean? Well, let's say if one node, okay, if I just had a single node and if I were to do the processing, it would take 10 hours, right? If I were to use 10 nodes, it will take in one hour, it will complete in one hour, guys, okay? So in other words, as you increase the number of nodes, that is called horizontal scalability, okay? Your processing power will increase and your computation time will decrease, guys, okay? That is what is the uh, horizontal scalability and that is again provided by Hadoop. What do you do? You just add the nodes, you just install Hadoop, make sure the settings are correct and so on. How do you uh, do that? We will talk about that later guys, okay? It is reliable. Why are we saying it is reliable guys? Because it uses commodity hardware. In commodity hardware it can go down any time. What are we doing? We are backing up. I back up the data there, I back up the data there. Why? If this goes down, I am still reliable. My application is down, I'm not stopping the entire company and not making a, a worrying about that, but I'm still continuing to run. That is what we mean by reliability, guys. How does it achieve? By replication. Each task must succeed. What does that mean? Well, not only from a storage perspective, but from a computation perspective also, if one of the nodes fails, I, the, the framework will automatically reinitiate the computation here and will perform the computation, guys, okay? It is taking care of the computation also just in case it fails uh, because, uh, because they work on commodity hardware again. That is what we mean by if the task must succeed or if each task must succeed. Okay, my bad, my bad. I, actually, I will back it up because of the replication, just like replication perspective, what we are looking at is we are achieving a fault tolerance of computation is also what that is and a job is nothing but a, a group of map tasks, guys, okay? And all the tasks must succeed. If any of the tasks fails, then the job is failed. What does that mean? Well, we'll, we'll talk more about that when I cover map reduce, guys, okay? For now, I will say a job is a collection of tasks and all the tasks will uh, in a, when they succeed, will indicate the job has succeeded, okay? Fault tolerance. Failed tasks are automatically retried. So in other words, if one of the node goes down while your uh, computation is uh, running, you know, they are automatically retried by the framework, not, not by us. Failed data transfers are automatically retried. Not only computation, but also the storage, the data which is being transferred if it fails and things like that, it's taken care by the framework. Servers can join and leave the cluster at any time. In other words, if you have a 10 node or 100 node cluster, because we're using commodity hardware, you can add them at runtime. You can add these uh, nodes at runtime. You can also remove them at uh, runtime if you think some of the data is getting corrupted or some of the nodes are affecting the other nodes, guys. That is what the fault tolerance is about, okay? Moving on. It is simple, guys. On the whole, what is it doing? The distributed storage and the distributed execution, it is reducing the complexity from a user standpoint. Developers do not need to worry about how the stadium is. They just need to focus on batting and bowling, okay? What is that? Well, that is your business logic and the analytical logic, guys. In other words, it will reduce the complexity. It will allow us to focus on what we like and what we would, what the company has hired us for. They want to they want us to go ahead and write their analytical logic and things like that, not worry about the internal operating system concepts or the framework level concepts, guys, okay? That's what we mean by it reduces complexity and 
conceptual operating system that spans multiple CPUs and disks. Disk guys. In other words, a bunch of computers, bunch of nodes together, they act as if they're one computer from a storage standpoint and also from an execution standpoint, guys. Okay, that's what Hadoop is taking care of, and that's why we are using Hadoop. Why? It is simple, guys. That is why it is short and sweet. Cool. And here is the last slide. Just a quick review of what we discussed, guys. Some of the main characteristics of Hadoop from a developer standpoint, guys. Okay, what do we have? Well, let's have a look at that. Cool. It is accessible, guys. All right. So let's choose that. It is accessible. It can run on large clusters of commodity machines or on cloud also it can run. And it is robust, guys. It is architected with the assumption of frequent hardware malfunctions. It can gracefully handle such failures, guys. Why, why is it architected with the assumption of frequent hardware malfunctions, guys? Because, number one, we use commodity hardware. Why do we use commodity hardware? To bring down the costs. If you go back to your 8 till office, you don't have to hire 10 PhD guys. You can hire 10 degree guys and get the same task done, right? So that is why uh, that will reduce the cost, that will increase the processing power and uh, reduce the computation time. Guys. We can do more work in less time by using more resources. So that's why we say it as robust. It is scalable, guys, okay? It scales linearly to handle large data by adding more nodes on the cluster. So in other words, as you add more nodes, our processing power is increasing. What one guy uh, can do in 10 hours, 10 guys will be able to do in one hour, right? So that is what we mean by scalable. As you add the number of resources, it is a linear ratio in which your computation time, your processing time reduces, guys. That's why it's said as linear, right? And it is simple. You don't have to worry about how your Fuel is getting converted to electricity. In other words, you don't have to be a mechanical engineer to drive a car. How does the parallel, how does the parallelization work? How does the multi-node communication work? All those things you don't have to worry. It will free you from those things. That is why it is said as simple, guys. Okay? And data locality. What happens? Once we store the data in Hadoop, we write our scripts. Whether you use one node, ten nodes, hundred nodes, or thousand nodes, the framework will take care of moving the code to the place where the data sets. That is called data locality, guys. It is called one of the fundamental design principles of Hadoop. Okay? And replication, guys, uses replication across servers to deal with unreliable storage of servers. What are unreliable storage and servers? Our commodity hardware. The only thing is, they, they do not guarantee us the uptime and the reliability. They can fail any time. So what do we do? We replicate the data, guys. Okay, what are these things? These are the characteristics from a developer standpoint, all right? And then comes the adoption drivers. What is adoption drivers? Well, these, from a company standpoint, why they would like to use Hadoop. Business drivers, bigger the data, higher the value. Remember my earlier example, guys? If I were to tell you, Sachin hit a century. And I would ask you, tell me if he's going to hit another century tomorrow. It's going to be tough to say, guys, okay? But if I were to tell you, Sachin hit two straight centuries and he's getting ready to play a game tomorrow, we hit a century, well, it will be slightly easier, guys, okay? Because we, we might feel slightly confident. But here's the magic, guys. If I tell you, Sachin hit straight nine centuries and he's playing the tenth game tomorrow, Logically, if you think from a common stand, common man standpoint, you know, you'll be very, very confident. What is that? The more the data you know, the more you know, the more the value, the more the possibility and more the probability is. That's what we mean by bigger the data, higher the value. What are companies doing? If they have their 10 years of data or 15 years of data, right, they will at most take one, two or maybe five years of data, get it into a database or data warehouse and run the reports. What does that mean? They will throw away their five to uh, previous five to ten years of data or more than that. What does that mean? Less the possibility, less are the higher probability that they get all that. Okay, what does Hadoop present? Well, if you have any data, do not throw it. Keep it. If not today, tomorrow you will find some very, very useful insights. That is what is the value, guys. Okay? And it uses commodity hardware. What happens? Your costs come down, guys. Okay? Every company you know, in the world today, 
almost in every company wants to bring down their costs okay and analytic solutions are very very expensive guys okay what's happening commodity hardware reduces the cost plus it is free Hadoop is free what will happen low cost per terabyte guys okay so and and another important guys okay one of the most important things the technical drivers existing systems undergo under growing requirements of 3 Vs are failing. What does that mean? What that means is as your volume, velocity and variety is increasing guys, the complexity of the applications is increasing. It is, it is not possible to get that kind of resources who are able to handle that kind of complexity and, and, uh, and work with them. What does Hadoop do? Well, it will simplify that. You don't have to worry about these 3 Vs, okay? As your 3 Vs grow, you know, your complexity will not grow. It will not change. It will remain the same. What you do well, for 1 GB of data will also work for 100 GBs or 100 terabytes of data, guys. Okay? So those are the some of the important points from a company standpoint why Hadoop is important, guys. Okay? Gentlemen, ladies, is that okay, guys? Are you with me? I think we are almost at the end of our session for today, guys. So we will continue from the uh, next slide uh, tomorrow. And we'll try to uh, focus on that, guys. Okay? Any questions, guys? Okay. So feel free to work with Chandra, our support folks, and uh, feel free to uh, let me know. Uh, let me take a question here, guys. Okay? Abiram says, is there any mi minimum requirement of commodity hardware for a Hadoop cluster to function? Minimum requirement means, I mean, generally you would have something which is working. Uh, you come, you test it out, uh, and you just plug it in, verify it's working, the hard drive is okay, and things like that. And you'll start working like that, Abhishek, okay? Uh, nothing, uh, uh, let me know if you can be a bit more specific, and I'll see if I can throw a bit more light on that, okay? And Naveen says, computational backup. Oh, well, what I mean by computational backup is, Naveen, I do not know if you were there earlier, when our code moves to uh, the different nodes where the data sits, right? If on one of the nodes the computation fails, okay, let me put it like this. In your ATL office, I don't know if you were there when I was explaining, Naveen, but in my ATL office, let's say you have 10 degree guys who are working on you know, helping the customers. If one of the degree guys leaves the office, the other nine can continue and you can find, you can get another 10th guy and replace him as a backup. What, uh, what is happening? We are providing a backup from a processing standpoint. We are not putting our entire ATL office on hold because one of the guys left, right? So that is one way to look at it. But again, short and sweet, when computation is happening on different blocks of data, Naveen, if on one of the nodes the computation fails, automatically the map reduce framework, okay, will pick it up, will detect that and reinitiate the computation on the other nodes where you have a replica of the data. Am I making sense, Naveen? Okay, great. Okay, thank you, buddy. And here's a question from Abhishek, guys. He says, I'm a non-CS guy and not able to understand few terminologies used here. Should I continue with the course? Okay. What you can do is you can hang in for one or two days more, Abhishek. You can see if you, uh, if you can uh, continue, if, you, if I'm able to answer your questions and things like that. What I would suggest is many of the people who are not in, you know, very technical-oriented fields are also getting into Hadoop, okay? So you can definitely consider giving a look at it. And it is something which will be useful. So what you can do is when you come across those terms, right, make a note of them, put them on your questions window. I will try my best in helping you out. If I'm unable to answer all of them, we, I, we can hook up another call or I can privately try to help you out with them, uh, Abhishek, okay? That way also I can try to help you out. Again, at your end, you know, one more time if you get a chance, try to go ahead and review the session and that will be of help, Abhishek, okay? So that's the direction uh, that I can give you, okay? I'm, I'm right now based in uh, Hyderabad, uh, Abhiram, okay? Okay. All right, guys, we're almost at the end. If you have any questions, you know, you can also go ahead and send it over to Chandra. I think I'm sure by now you have his email address. I will also go ahead and put my email address just in case here. If you'd like to go ahead and feel uh, like to reach out to me, 
so I'll share my kernels uh, and on the LMS also you can Naveen at kernel sphere.com also copy Chandra just in case I'm not able to answer Chandra will be uh, having a look at these things he will also I think it is Chandra K will ask Chandra to also send you Abraham appreciate it buddy appreciate your comments and uh, course structure for the five days. Huh? Um, what I'm going to be doing is um, this is the this is the format I would uh, proceed. Uh, uh, Nikhil, I will start with you know we're in the big data and Hadoop introduction module. Next we'll move on to the understanding cluster architecture and MapReduce, and then uh, we'll move on to what is called advanced MapReduce concepts. And here is a detailed uh, look at uh, these things. You know, distributed model. This this is where we are right now. Okay. And we'll also look at use cases tomorrow, how it is used and so on. And then how do you design a cluster? What are the different aspects of them? If it is possible, I will also try to log into the cluster tomorrow and get you guys a feel of that guys, okay? And then we'll co cover the main heart of it. And then we'll cover some advanced concepts. For those of you who are not much into Java guys, this, this may be slightly redundant session, okay? This has been purely for those guys who have uh, been into Java, they requested some advanced uh, Java programs. So this one will be slightly redundant. You can take a break at when it comes to this stage or you can just hang in there, see how complex these things are, okay? What we do, what we write hundreds of lines of code here, right? We'll write them in just one line of code in Pig and Hive. Okay, so those are the techniques that we'll be uh, covering. And Sauro, Chandra will tell, uh, send you Chandra, can you please send out this Excel spreadsheet, buddy, to all, all of them who are logged in? Okay, great. Okay, so we'll, we'll try to proceed like that. That's Jan, and then we'll cover Pig and so on. That's how we'll proceed, guys, okay? So Chandra will send you out these things, guys, okay? So gentlemen, ladies, can you give me a final acknowledgement if I can go ahead and wrap it up here for today? Okay, great. I appreciate it, guys. I hope this was useful, and uh, I appreciate your time. I look forward to meeting you tomorrow. I wish you good luck. And a final suggestion and recommendation, if you're really uh, planning on taking this course, I would strongly suggest you take it, guys. Okay, as I said, many good things have been put together into this framework. The concepts that you would learn here will come of use to you the coming 15 to 20 years, definitely, for sure, guys. Okay, so do definitely take it. And it's always worth to have another look at the sessions um, so that you sync in these uh, concepts well. So in case you're not getting them the first time, just give it a little bit of time. You, you give it a little bit of time, it will, it's like you're respecting it. And as you respect it, it will respect you. It will sink inside you, okay? So that would be my um, you know, honest suggestion and recommendation. So, so with that, I will wrap it up. I will look forward to meeting you guys tomorrow. You guys have a good one take care and bye for now guys okay thank you again well, very good evening Chandra. to everybody we'll stop it here yeah very good evening to everybody thank you mr navi and uh, i like to speak to uh, students and some things like uh, uh well just hang on well uh, uh very good evening to all so I just wanted to show you some interesting things actually. Uh, first of all, uh, people would be getting registered with getting sign up and uh, uh, we will be providing them like after paying, paying the payment, we will be providing the LS, LMS access. So what is this LMS? So I will just put you an idea what is this LMS first. Are people are able to hear me? Great. Okay. So LMS is one of the uh, tool which is provided by kernel training where uh, the, all the sessions will be recorded and given to the student for a lifetime. How that is to be done? So when you get login into this, so we have a user ID and password. Just entering into the user ID and password, the people who get uh, registered for this will be getting the access for uh, viewing the course content and the classes for lifetime. How this is? For example, this is a person, this is a demo version. 
Mr. Hasid is a person who has registered for two courses, H4 Development and Administration and VMware. So if they wanted to listen the class after some time, uh, they could go for a continue course and all the trainings which were happened in the class will be uh, deposited here. We can say like the classes will be deposited here. For example, the first class with the material or the PPT which was there and the second class with the PPT here and uh, you can go ahead with the third class PPT here and the rest that goes on actually the fourth class and the rest, the rest of the thing which goes on like this actually so fifth class, sixth class, seventh class so this all the things will be also given to all the students who have got registered with us so it's nothing but it's a benefit for you people like uh, if you are not able to concentrate onto the class you can it revise it one more time or revise it for n number of times to get the concept and it will also be useful for you people you when you go for interviews you can revise all the classes one more time and then go for the interview so that's a better idea the, the def default like when you go for offline classes what happens is like only when you concentrate on the class you'll write down something there and later if you forget it or if you if you want it able to recall it it will be difficult but here in the online classes as the classes are being getting recorded the same recorded session for every classes will be shared with the students who got registered with us and this would be helping them for giving the best uh, support for the future where people can uh, get uh, the things about this okay and uh, well I just wanted to tell you about some of the things called uh, uh, cluster and node actually so instead of me I hope Naveen sir would be helping it better so Naveen sir did you wanted to help him uh, regarding the cluster okay well uh, uh, I just Oops, wanted to sorry about that Chandra I was on mute um, uh, so gentlemen ladies we will be setting up a 20 node cluster and we will be giving a VPN access and uh, once you work on that that will be uh, kind of a very useful thing for you from a real world standpoint uh, for you to get some experience and get a feel of that uh, okay so it's like playing cricket uh, on nets versus playing cricket in a stadium um, so if you work on a single VM, it's like you're practicing cricket in a single uh, net. Whereas once you have a, once you go and play the cricket in the stadium, you're ready to play, play the cricket in an international uh, stadium. So that is what the cluster will help you. And once you register in, the, in about a week's time, well, a few formalities we need to complete. Once that is done, you'll be able to uh, see the things on the cluster. If possible, tomorrow I will try to give you a feel of the cluster, uh, guys. Okay. Thank you, Chandra. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Navi. And uh, well, so our kernel training is in having our own data center, which will be consisting of this 20 node cluster, and we have an access of up to 100 users of VPN access. It's nothing but we'll be giving them an IP address. With that IP address, they can come down to our uh, office, like we can, they can log into our office, and whatever 20 node cluster is available at our office can be accessed okay and that is first part the second part is this uh, Hadoop uh, things are also shared to your laptop so our administrator will be in touch with you even we can also do a one node cluster on your laptop and whenever you feel any time convenient to practice in your laptops that's great so the difference between here is when you practice on one of the laptop you get only one node cluster but when you practice on uh, the data center which has 20 node cluster then you will be able to identify how things goes in the real time so that the real time practice we wanted to give you more clarity and more efficiently so how uh, people should get registered for this yes so you have to go for all courses the first part is you need to go for all courses which is there under the kernel training.com and you can select the course called Hadoop Development Administration and then you can get uh, the link call uh, uh, March 2nd which is for 50 hours you can just go for enroll button then a payment gateway would be coming down into the path 
you can just use your debit card or internet banking account or credit card you can just go for the enrollment when you get the enrollment then we'll be activating from our end to give you LMS from our end so this is what I just wanted to share you some tips and if you have any queries any kind of things you can just uh, put me an email uh, to the respected email ID and you can also talk to me on my phone number I'll just display to my yourself so this is my direct number you can reach me any type of queries in the classes or backups or anything else you wanted to ask you can just reach me at this number anytime and I'll be helping you shortly for that so with this I just wanted to wrap it up the class and uh, I hope uh, I really thank for all the students to coming down for the class and I see everybody to come down tomorrow and uh, make this good and have good, uh, good night for all and I hope Naveen sir do you wanted to make anything here more? I think I'm good Chandra. Fine then I'll be wrapping up here and take care bye bye. Thanks guys bye now.